Nick Chambers is an average nice guy, who is the webmaster of a fan site dedicated to his favorite actress, Jill Goddard. Jill Goddard is the lead actress of the movie named Dark Sky, The Third Wave, and is currently attending its promo ceremony in Austin. Nick has come to Austin too, as he won an online competition where the prize was a dinner date with Jill. He is currently in his hotel, watching the ceremony on his laptop, and simultaneously posting Jill's pictures on his fan site. There, Nick receives an email from Dark Sky Productions, urging him to record an introduction video. So Nick turns on his camera and records a video, introducing himself and his fan site. He sends the video, and soon after, receives a call from a guy at Dark Sky named Cord. Cord asks where is he right now, and Nick says in his hotel in Austin. Cord is surprised to hear this and tells him that the contest was cancelled. Nick gets confused as he thought he was supposed to wait in the hotel. In a nutshell, he came all the way to Austin for nothing. Cord tells Nick to not worry and sends him a link. When Nick drags and drops the link onto the Dark Sky website, it gives Nick access to the surveillance cameras of the ceremony hall. Cord tells Nick to take a picture of Jill's cleavage as it's the best shot they can get right now. Cord then sends him another link, opening a window of Jill's phone. Nick now has complete access to Jill's phone, including his cameras, contacts, and photos. Poor Nick is unable to comprehend anything, and asks Cord who is he and how did he hack into Jill's phone. To his surprise, Cord reveals that Jill is the one who cancelled the dinner for absolutely no reason. So it's fair that Nick gets some revenge on her. While they were talking, the ceremony ends, and Jill calls her agent, Tony. They decide to meet in the Grand Wells Hotel, the same hotel where Nick is staying. Nick is staying in room 700, whereas Jill and her Tony will be arriving in room 686. Cord then sends him another link which records everything from Nick's camera. Cord tells him to place the camera beside the window, from where they can spy on room 686. Cord also tells Nick to turn off the light so no one can see that they are spying. Then, another strange window pops up on Nick's laptop and he asks Cord about it. Cord says there's no strange window on his screen and leaves after telling him that he can call him anytime. Everything that is happening is beyond Nick's understanding and he clicks on that strange window. This connects him to three strange figures, who refer to Nick as Nevada. They say they want to work for him, and the line they are calling from is untraceable. Nick can't understand a thing, so he cuts the call as Jill arrives in the room, she is apparently dating Tony, but the two get into a fight and she leaves the place in frustration. Suddenly, the lights in Nick's room turn on, and Tony sees his camera. Nick quickly turns off the lights, but Tony is already on his way. He calls Cord for help, who hacks into Tony's phone and learns that he has called reception to learn about the room that is across from room 686. He finds out that it's room 700, and he immediately heads toward it. Cord tells Nick to follow all of his instructions if he doesn't want to get in trouble and Nick agrees. Cord tells him to put all his belongings and camera under the bed, and then find a bag in the cupboard, which has a taser in it. Nick needs to zap Tony from behind as soon as he enters the room, and Cord will handle the rest. Nick is hesitant to commit a crime, but he is too scared to face the agent and agrees to the plan. Tony enters his room, and immediately falls unconscious as Nick zaps him from behind. Cord then tells him to gag Tony's mouth and cuff him. Nick realizes that Cord has already prepared everything in his room, and again asks why is he doing all this. Cord then destroys all of Nick's belongings that were under the bed and tells him to leave the room with his laptop. Cord then guides him out of the hotel by hacking into its security system. Nick keeps asking Cord who he is, but Cord manages to dodge all the questions. In the car, Cord tells Nick to take the ping pong camera from the glove compartment and place it on the dashboard. Nick is fed up with the orders and refuses to follow his instructions. So, Cord blackmails Nick into further following his instructions by revealing that the entire contest was a hoax, and he now has video proof of Nick's crimes. Poor Nick has no choice but to comply with Cord's orders and he begins following the arrows. Cord tells him to keep following the arrows and leaves. The strange window pops up again and Nick gets connected to the three hackers who refer to him as Nevada. The three guys want to work for him, and they introduce themselves as a group named Triops. Cord returns, so the head of Triops, Pierre, mutes himself and Nick makes an excuse that he was listening to radio. When Cord leaves again, Pierre tell Nick that they will leave an open window for him and he can call them anytime. Also, he might be the best hacker in the world, but they are the close second. Nick soon reaches the destination and Cord informs him that it was even easier to hack into Jill's computer. Cord then tells him to drag a red rectangle onto Jill's computer. Nick refuses to do that, so Cord shows himself, revealing that he is hiding in Jill's apartment and he will attack her if Nick doesn't obey. Nick agrees to drag that red rectangle onto Jill's computer. Meanwhile, he contacts Pierre and tells them to track his location. Pierre and others excitedly get to work as they think they are working for Nevada. When Nick drags that red rectangle, it opens up a live stream of Tony getting electric shocks in the hotel. Nick and Jill both get scared to see it. 
court orders Nick to tell Jill that she is not allowed to use her phone. Otherwise, Tony will get electrocuted. Cord then tells Nick to go ahead and take his revenge on her. Even though he doesn't too, he forces Jill to strip her clothes and clicks photos to post on his fan site. Jill tries to sneakily pick up the phone to call the cops. But her phone is already hacked, so the call doesn't go through. When Cord leaves, Nick turns on the microphone of Jill's phone and tells her to not worry. However, just then, Cord enters Jill's room and kidnaps her using brute force. Pierre informs Nick that the cops are on their way. They then hack into the cameras of the house and see Cord on the first floor. When the cops arrive outside the house, Nick realizes that Cord is actually not inside, and the video they are seeing is a loop. Just then, the room where Jill was caught explodes and Nick hears the explosion just in front of him, meaning Cord was right by the street moments ago. Pierre informed Nick that the police are now coming after him as Jill's computer was bouncing signals to his laptop. Cord 2 gets back on and informs Nick that he has one last task for him. Nick needs to distract the police for a while and that will be all. Cord leaves saying this and Pierre manages to track his location. They tell Nick that Cord is in a car not far away from him, so Nick begins chasing him while also evading the police. Just then, Nick finds out that Cord has also hacked his website and he has posted naked pictures of Jill. Also, a complete video will be available on the website in 30 minutes. Not only that, this same broadcast is showing on one third of the global network. It means whoever is behind this, he is very powerful. Nick remembers that Cord had more ping pong cameras with him, so he asks Pierre to track them. Meanwhile, one guy from Triops tracks down the source of Jill's naked photos and manages to copy a video file before he got blocked. The video file's name is Team Trops Call, and the date is two days ago. Two days ago, the Triops contacted Nevada as they wanted to work for him. The Triops realize that the real Nevada can be seen with the mask in the video file, whereas Nick is just a decoy used by Nevada to throw off the police. Nevada is actually the world's best hacker, who conducts all these operations and heists for the good of the world, and Nick shouldn't worry about Jill as no one ever got hurt in Nevada's operations. Then in that video file, they see that Nevada got killed by Cord and he took control of his servers. Pierre tracks down all those ping pong cameras and Nick begins following him. He finds out that Jill is in the trunk of the car and he is on his way to collide with Cord. Nick hurries and goes fast to crash with Cord but he misses and accidentally crashes into a wall. He gets unconscious and when he wakes up, Cord is outside his car recording him. Soon after, Cord shoots Nick and he dies inside his car. When the timer of the broadcast is over, Cord doesn't give the viewers the complete video of Jill, but rather threatens to kill her if half of the viewers don't leave the website. Jill's life is dependent on the viewer count. The human tendency can be guessed easily as the viewer count increases instead of dropping, so Cord fakes her death by exploding an abandoned factory. After that, Jill realizes her place in society and confesses that she shouldn't be a bitch to everyone around her. However, she tries to flee when she sees the opportunity, but fails. Cord ties her once again, but just then, gets a message from Nevada on his computer. Nevada reveals that he was impersonating Nick this whole time and real Nick is alive in the trunk of the car. Also, he didn't die when Cord shot him because he is used to wearing a bulletproof vest at all times. When Cord goes outside again, he realizes that the Nick behind the wheel was just a decoy, who Nevada used. This was all an operation of Nevada to bring out Cord from hiding. And right now, Nevada is back in the factory saving Jill. A fire breaks out in the factory and Cord sees through his cameras that Nevada saved Jill and they both took shelter in a bunker. Cord tries to enter the bunker too, but the factory soon collapses and he gets crushed under the debris. Inside the bunker, Nevada and Jill have everything they need to survive for a while. They see in the news that because of Jill's sudden and tragic death, the movie Dark Sky, the third wave will be soon released to honor her. Nevada apologizes to Jill for having her go through so much trouble. He reveals that he will go into hiding for a while after this, and Jill confesses that she too wants to go into hiding. When Nevada asks for how long, she says long enough. That was it for the recap guys. Make sure to like and subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell as well so that you are notified of our next uploads.